volunteer acceptance offer. It was put out by one of our local managers, Amelia Gonzalez, who quickly discussed after the cuts went down the way they did. In fact, Pacifica, I don't know if it was Arlene or someone else in Pacifica, tried to renege on the severance offer, the terms of the severance offer that seven staff members had taken. And I think this is significant because when we talk about a consensus understanding of reality, pretty much everything you've heard about the financial crisis afflicting the network is true. PPF makes huge losses. WBAI has taken huge losses. The network as a whole is incredibly deprived of cash. But there's a difference between saying KPFA lost $583,000 and saying that was all fixed by getting rid of Amy Allison's 27 hour a week, $20 an hour job. There's an order of magnitude difference. And what we feel like is that we got the shock doctrine. Wait a second, that just went from five minutes to 30 seconds in the space well, of a minute. How'd that work? You've got three and a half minutes. <laughs> Go ahead, but, but uh, it was just decided that if someone had spoken before that they would get three minutes, and we did announce that, but since you didn't hear it, go ahead, Steve. Yeah. Thank you, I appreciate that. That by the time the morning show got cut, our local managers at KPFA had cut the hours of eight people working at the station, which we did not complain about or fight. Some people got cut twice, I was one of them. They had procured seven voluntary layoffs, People who are willing to take a buyout package and go away without any anger or resentment. This cumulatively saved the station almost half a million dollars. What was left, what they got out of killing the morning show, was one part-time salary. Our union had cost-saving proposals on the table. Our union members, as we proved later that year, were willing to cut our own hours further to keep someone from going over the deck. Pacifica rejected these proposals, was not open to dialogue. As I said, it's the first time we know of, since the democratization of Pacifica, that an executive director has waded into a station to take a program off the air and to make cuts like that. So the question is, do we have a democratic station right now? When your prime time is rearranged from on high by Pacifica against the wishes of the people that the station's listeners and staff have elected to represent them, do we have a democratic station? When Pacifica's next move is to throw out votes so as to change the outcome of election and then to deny people the seats on the Pacifica National Board they've been duly elected to, do we have a democratic station or do we have a power grab? Do we have an agenda? Do we have people trying to program the station according to vendettas rather than according to what's good for KPFA? Now, recall process is painful. I've been through it. Tracy was involved with an attempt to recall me from my staff position representing KPFA staff on our board. It went down two to one. But it is fundamentally democratic. It is an accountability tool. And I'm glad that there's an open dialogue about the issues taking place here. I hope we can get a consensus on some of the reality. The KPFA staff did not fight the concept of cuts. We fought how they went down. The KPFA's financial crisis was not resolved by getting rid of the morning show. Largely, it was cuts that preceded that, that trimmed our expenses. And that since then, to make up in the loss of fundraising, as I mentioned earlier, Pacific has added, KPFA has added 19 days of fundraising to its calendar. Two days of fundraising would have paid for Amy Allison's salary for a year. Ask yourself what's better, two days of fundraising and the morning show intact, or 19 extra days of fundraising with the morning show gone? Okay. Everyone who's shown up here today to uh, speak out and, and get their point across, I think they've shown a lot of goodwill. Yes, that. Okay. Well, my name is Andrea Pritchett, and I'm on the local station board as a listener representative. And I first of all want to thank everybody who convened this evening and who worked so hard to get the word out about it. Um, I think it's really a healthy and positive response to what's happening in our community. And I also want to thank Brian and everybody else who came here of a different mind and knowing that you might not possibly be in the majority and stuff. So I do appreciate that. Um, I, I guess my experience is that I, I came to, to be 
I'm on the listener board, on the LSB, because Henry mentioned that it was possible, and you know, I, I felt a certain responsibility because I've been hearing for so long. You know, I'm, I've been listening for 30 years, but trying actually trying to keep my distance because I have so many acquaintances and friends on this quote unquote both sides. And now I have stepped into the fray, I realize how resentful I am of being on the other side. Mm -hmm. Because the world I live in has like a bunch of sides. The world I live in has a thousand different sides. And, and, to be, and to find myself one morning waking up, to find out that the news in the morning was reporting that the KPFA and LSB majority had a hit list, and that's why they had voted for this and that, I thought, my gosh, the confidentiality of an LSB meeting has been breached so fast that I can wake up the morning after a late night meeting and have it broadcast. <laughs> and, and, and to be smeared in this way by folks that I have considered to be credible journalists, credible news people. So sadly, I guess I feel a little bit like, like Carol Spoon when she says, you know, the, the scales fell from her eyes, I was a little bit idealistic. And sadly, what I hear on KBFA news now, I take with a dose of salt. And that hurts, that hurts because I need that news broadcast. I need it desperately. Because I'm trying to be an activist in this community, and I need reliable information. I need community-based information. I need to be able to wake up and find out what the hell happened after I left. 400 people got arrested. What do you mean they took over City Hall? What are you talking about? And I just want to put a shout out to Mitch Jezerich. Bless his heart, because he's there. He is in the thick of it. So just, you know, whatever. I, I admire, and that's, that's, that's local coverage. I think, I think we need it. I think it makes our community strong. Now, there was a time when Dan Siegel on the LSB made an effort. He said, let's find out what the differences are between the two sides. And we weren't really able to have that kind of a broad, free, free wheeling kind of conversation. But what was interesting is the next two votes that came up, one of which was, how to gather input on the interim general manager's performance and whether or not the input of unpaid staff would be included. That side said, no, don't include that. It's not necessary, we don't need it, let's streamline this process. The other side said, but wait, we need to be inclusive and we need to value the work of the unpaid staff just as highly as the work of the paid staff. The privilege of getting paid in the movement, let's not forget, a lot of us do this stuff all day, every day, free, right? So anybody who's got a movement job knows that those are hard to come by. And I consider getting paid at KPFA a movement job. It is a movement job. So uh, the next vote that came up was whether or not to have a pro who, how to include the, the public on the program council. One side. And uh, associated with the same KPFA folks said, no, 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 we don't need all those listener representatives. I mean, that just complicates things. The other side said, yes, of course we need more listener input. And that, in my mind, is, is the, the quintessence of the difference. There is sort of a, a, a professional radio, and I, would, I don't know if it's class warfare, but there certainly is an elitism that, 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 that diminishes the experience of those in the community who are living firsthand the oppressions that are being reported on by some at KPFA who are wonderful professional analysts. Very interesting. Wash the dishes, listen to that, that's good. <laughs> but I need the voices of those people who are, who are living it. You know, not only, but there's a balance. There's a national, local balance. There's community, international balance, and so forth. Thank you, thank you. So, so I guess I, what I'm, I'm making a plea for, yes, stop the recall. Stop the horrible, hideous wasting of resources. It kills me how many people are out there doing the do with the Occupy and fighting, fighting, fighting. And other people are not on the fundraising committee, not on the development committee, not on the outreach committee, because they're busy creating propaganda to undermine the stage, and I wish they would stop.
Ford have been calling for a debate on the air, pro and con recall. And it's the first time in my memory that anything like that has been called for on the air. So thank you. I want to make the first one is unity. We need unity. The corporations are out there wrecking our lives. And we at KPFA, I want to thank all the KPFA staff and, and the volunteers for all the great work that they've done giving us the news and the information that we need. But we need unity. We can't be fighting amongst each other. And, and the most important thing is this isn't class warfare. The greatest enemy is individualism. Individualism is our greatest enemy. Our own individualism is what's causing this breakdown. You know, whether it's Brian or Tracy, their individualism is causing the disunity that's taken place here in this station. When I first went to a demonstration, John Foreman told me this is class warfare between the union and the management. And I believe that Tracy was the enemy. Tracy was the enemy. But the more I saw what's going on in the streets with the Occupy movement, and I realized, no, Tracy isn't our enemy. The corporations are our enemy. Obama is our enemy. And, and we got to unite together. We got to stick together. Brian Tinker and Tracy got to get together and, 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 and become comrades and not be, you know, uh, um, uh, treat each other like class enemies. This is not the way people in the movement has to have to operate. I lived in Europe for a year. And people that are on the same side, they don't treat each other like this. They treat each other with respect, even if they have different views. They may have a big political disagreement, and, and, and they'll go out for lunch together. They'll go out for supper together. They'll, 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 they'll be friends. You can have a different point of view, but you can still be friends. And this is something that we have to do here. So that's my first point. We need unity, because we need unity against the corporations that are wrecking our lives. And this is my second point. Uh, KPFA news program gives too much uh, a time to the police point of view, to, to the mayor's point of view. We don't need that. Now we're going to listen to the culture of uh, NPR. We want to hear the occupiers' point of view. You know, give us the occupiers. They can do more. They can tell us more about what's going on. We don't need with the police because they're nothing but liars, thieves, and cheats, and, 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 and uh, uh, fabricators. <laughs> fabricators, to put it gently. I like liars. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, I. Uh, Staff here have done a wonderful job of please let's give more time to the occupiers. We don't need that other stuff. We want to listen to NBC, CBS, or any of that other uh, those other stations that have all that they want. Please have all the time they that they need. We don't have to use our money to to uh, let them give their point of view to us, which we don't want to listen to anyhow. Thank you. All right, we're going to go over time here. We're going to go over time a little bit. So there's two people over here, and there's like four more people over here. We keep the three minutes or less. And uh, when we get done, can you help us put chairs away? Hi, once again, it's www.stopthekpfarecall.org. Please visit our webpage to get as much information as you can. I think we've done a good job deconstructing the recall petition. And we have a good staff FAQ page with a lot of the background and history about what is the core issue here. And it is, I believe, the difference between public radio and community radio and finding the correct balance between the two. Both have their strong points and their weaknesses, and that has been the plague driving a wedge at KPFA for a couple of decades now. Um, fact check, Brian says Arlene didn't do it, Amelia Gonzalez did it or something. Esther Manila did it. Well, the fact is, the decision to offer of all of the staff a, <coughs> a buyout 
came out of Arlene Englehart and was implemented by the station management. So, you know, you can twist and distort things, but that's how the decision got made. All right? And I'm so sad about this distortion. I'm just so sad about this distortion. It's not right. We need to get to come down to grips with this. Distortion and words like fraud and theft being thrown around in our community. Not good, not good, not good. It's gotta stop. That's why we have to vote no on this recall, to stop it in its tracks and say, no, this doesn't work with us. We're not that kind of community. Somebody mentioned, Max mentioned, he believes there's a concerted effort to drive Pacifica into bankruptcy. I do too. I don't know who's behind it. I think there are a lot of useful idiots supporting it who don't have their heads screwed on. But I believe there is a concerted effort to take this network down. There has been too much of this kind of stuff going on around the network, undermining efforts to make it work for too long. And the writing has been on the wall. I've been talking in my emails for, since 2007 saying, bankruptcy's coming. Wake up, wake up, wake up. You've got to do something. They went bankrupt. So my time's up. Uh, I want to thank everybody for putting on this. But you can't have unity. You cannot have unity if people do not want to be, on, be unified and if they don't have a principle around which to unify. So we need to find out who wants to preserve this network and who doesn't. Yes, I, I just wanted to say that um, my perception of directly or indirectly, first of all, I want to thank the timekeepers. They've been doing a great job. And it's a pleasure as a minority to know that you get the same amount of time as everybody else and not held to a lower standard as I frequently thought I've been held in this hall and other places where there are predominantly white progressives and liberals before you. Um, now, there are real differences here. If this is not about people all coming together and having a kumbaya moment. There's a real difference in KPFA and, and in Pacifica as there is in this country. And it's people like Obama who, who feel that, you know, you can have the white cop and the black victim get together and have a beer, and the white cop will, will understand what the black victim feels like, and the black victim will feel, you know, what it's like to be a white cop. You know, this is not the same. And, you know, with regard to what Dave behind me, uh, and I'm Joseph Anderson again, for anyone who doesn't remember, uh, talking about Larry Benson. You know, my problem with Benson talking about some of these real differences is I think that Benson and, and some other people at KPFA, you know, to put it bluntly, were about the biggest effing white liberal racist I ever came across. And I say that not knowing Benson personally, but knowing how he came across on the air. You know, with regard to Amy Allison, who I really like a lot, getting back to the morning show, Amy Allison opened up the phones one day and said, we wanted, we, Philip and I, want to hear what you have to say about who's ahead and who's behind between uh, Obama and McCain. Nothing of substance. The horse race. I thought this is what we criticize the mainstream media uh, for. You know, with regard to people now in, in the morning that I mentioned before, like Davey D, when Davey D was on with Bensky, there was substantively a different perception between Davey D, who's not merely black, but a black, I regard him as a grassroots intellectual, and the observations he would make about the conventions, and the observations that Bensky would make about the conventions, which really came from kind of a white male liberal perspective. You know, the part with Bensky is he's, he's upset that he's not his alter ego, Michael Krasny. 
And ask most black people in the Bay Area what they think of Michael Krasny, let alone Larry Bensky. So these are just some of the things that I want to emphasize. You know, part of the problem, it seems like KPFA only really wants to hear from you at, at pledge time. And so when they have a, a long time, casual, personally valued friend of mine, Norman Solomon, on to talk about how Obama following Bush's policies, Obama exceeding Bush's policies, and the Democratic Party are really better than the Republicans after all the criticism that Norman Solomon now has after the fact about Obama. They don't open up the phone lines to have anybody challenge that, but they have my longtime casual friend on almost every week to give us the doctrine about how the Democrats are really better than the Republicans. And the last thing I'll just interject here, getting back to the morning show. You know, when I called into the morning show as, I guess, a black grassroots intellectual with, who's read something or other, and tried to make a parallel between the, the phony, um, the, the setup for the first Gulf War, and I'm going to finish up, the setup for the first Gulf War, the parallels between the Gulf War and the Korean War, and how they were both set up by the American government. How many people have that knowledge? The minute I said Gulf War and Korean War, I guess he figured this black guy, what does he know? And he said, we're not talking about the Korean War. Cut me off. Thank you. Hi, I'm, uh, this is Steve Kessler again. Um, I'm, I'm torn between uh, two poles. Uh, one is the, the real unity as opposed to a false unity that someone said better than I just did. And uh, a story, uh, a friend of mine who is in the Communist Party, and then after that fell apart here in the, in the 50s, she went to the South and was a civil rights uh, person, a teacher of Alice Walker, among other things, and a colleague of uh, Howard Zinn and, and Stott and Lynn. Her name was uh, Isabel Cerny. And Isabel said this, something to me that has always stuck with me. And that is, um, you know, people in this country, on the left, rather, we tend to do that which people in, in, the, in the rest of society do, and that we praise to excess and we condemn to excess. So that's one poll, and the other is not to succumb to false unity. So maybe I'll, I'll, I'll lean more towards not succumbing to false unity. Um, and that brings me to Brian's recall election. Uh, as several of you know, I was brought into uh, by the Pacifica to contract to run the recall election. And I did so, uh, I was told uh, by people who were quite partisan about it, that in fact I wasn't going to get pushed around by Brian, one. And two, no one would challenge me about my honesty or fairness. And I made sure that we change the things so that we maximize the number of words uh, on the ballot statement, uh, for instance, that Brian could have. And uh, there was a bit of a misunderstanding because of my awkwardness. Uh, and uh, I'm the Alphadarian, and a few of the other people who were uh, Brian's uh, colleagues uh, uh, checked with me about it, and I, and I clarified it. But I realized, in fact, Brian had uh, misled them to uh, think that uh, the election was going to be set up differently than it was. And uh, I'll throw a couple things out. Brian may want to respond. And that is, uh, we're talked about the, the money. Uh, Lem Lem Reggio, uh, the former manager, whose uh, I think qualifications were she was a waitress for the Hallinans brothers at one of their restaurants, that, uh, that Lem Lem uh, Reggio uh, uh, gave Brian $20,000 to teach uh, apprentices or people training for the news. That's free money, right? Well, it's not going out to the fellow unions to how do we divide this up, brothers and sisters. That was just done. Who knows? Could pay for Brian to go on a trip to educate himself somewhere else. Or about something else. And do a good job, I'm sure. Uh, and then finally, if I sound a little angry, uh, I took $500 for two months. Uh, so $1,000 total. Uh, that wasn't publicized or anything, and uh, I just gotten off of disability, and uh, rather just, that was the first time I was able to do any work. I'm finishing, thank you. And, uh, and that was uh, not making a lot of money. But I did it because it bothered me to take any money from KPFA. 
And uh, anyway, nevertheless, Brian, as uh, on the majority and the treasurer, used his position, and he can correct me if I'm wrong, to come into the Pacific and National offices to see the records to find out how much money I was getting or not getting. He didn't obviously fight that. Okay, so I think this is the character of this person who I think is toxic. And we need to be really clear. Now, if he wants to do some therapy and get together in, in, with his family and, and maybe redo his life somewhat, great, do it. I think he should get a chance to respond. That was a personal. Steve, I never went to the Pacific and National Office to get any information about you, but every single person who gives money to KPFA or Pacifica is entitled to know how it's spent on you or anyone else. And Ledlam Regio was never a waitress for the Helen M. Brothers. Uh, Nicole Sawaya was in her 20s, which is a very long time ago. And I applied for a competitive grant from the San Francisco Foundation to train people in the station. I applied with a detailed line-by-line -line budget, spent the money in accordance with that line-by-line -line budget, and gave a full report to the San Francisco Foundation, a copy of which is on file at KPFA if you want to check it out. This was not money that was given to me by a manager. It's money I raised on my own initiative that the station would not have had if I did not raise it, that was resources put into training and empowering unpaid staff at KPFA. You need a grant writer for the about that for the station. All right. You guys, you guys, that's enough. Yeah, that's a little, a little too much back there. Thank you, Brian. All right, let's hear from Dave Helen. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Um, I have a lot of respect for Peter Frank. Um, but, um, Larry Bensky wasn't a student volunteer for the uh, Paris Review. He was the editor of the, mag of the magazine. So it's a little bit different saying he was, you know, and I have no idea whether he's a CIA agent or he's some other intelligence asset or not, but I have my suspicions because he, he would have us believe that Oswald was the lone assassin of JFK. He would have us believe that night the, the official government conspiracy theory that 19 hijackers with $60 worth of box cutters hijacked three planes defeating our multi-trillion dollar military flying two planes into two buildings in New York City while collapsing three buildings uh, which obliterated all the files on Enron and Worldcom and also just happened to like land a plane after, after uh, knowing for over an hour that planes were hijacked into the Pentagon that destroyed the records, the uh, audit at records, when the day before on September 10th, Larry, uh, uh, Donald Rumsfeld announced that, oh, we can't find $2.3 trillion. And all those records got destroyed. He would have us believe that. So I don't know whether he's a CIA agent or not. All I can say is that he worked for a magazine that was started as a CIA cover. And he's an apologist for police brutality. And he's an apologist for police, police brutality. Now, I need to, I need to speak, speak quickly because, hey, Brian's talking all about, oh, we want democracy, but, well, there used to be, uh, there used to be a thing called the uh, um, Program Council. Well, guess what? His faction said, we're gonna obliterate the Program Council, and Sasha O'Lilly, ran the programming at the station without any community input, hired Amy Allison without any community input. So it is a whole rhetoric here about like, oh, we're trying to be democratic. Come on, give me a break. And lastly, but not lastly, Len Len Regio was given a check for $375,000. She did not cash it. Why? Why did she not cash a $375,000 check? It makes the station look bad. It, you know, I mean, if, if they're not trying to bankrupt the station, I don't know what. And how it's very difficult to work with people who are trying to bankrupt the station. 
You know, it's like they're, it's like a parasite, you know? It's like if half your body has cancer, you know, you're gonna have a really tough time trying to live. Thank you, Dave. We're gonna have to uh, close it out soon, so nobody else in line, please. Uh, we have three here, and we have two here. All right, let's, let's do that. Uh, Vicente Cruz, Oakland Green Party Outreach Committee, Decolonize Oakland, Occupy Oakland, and Probable Candidate for School Board District 3. Um, I am speaking for um, a few Green members and also for members of my community where we hold town hall meetings nightly on the block. Um, there was no outreach done to us about this. Um, there was to the Greens, but not to the regular. And you can tell by the demographics here that you know, to me, I make the joke, it's a, sort of like a Republican National Convention. You've got the same people of color all the time. Um, our observations were that on both sides, um, it seems that it's very childish. Uh, the words that were coming out from one side were just completely inflammatory. Whether or not you agree with it or not, it just it seems that even tonight, uh, when we're trying to get people to respect the process and be quiet, or at the beginning of the night, how we spoke to one another, was completely juvenile. Um, I was an educator for a very, very long time, and it reminded me of being on the playground and having to negotiate with students calling each other bad names. Um, to my fellows in the block, what I would recommend as far as to not support the recall only because it seems like it's a waste of energy, that there are a lot bigger priorities, one of which, where are all the people of color, right? Right over less than two blocks away is Oakland, California, Chocolate City. But yet, and we do. I am a big fan of the morning show. I also think that overall KPFA is morning just one morning. is just morning show, not the mix. I don't listen to the mix anymore. It just wasn't for me. Uh, but KPFA overall seems like it's still part of the two-party system to me. I haven't heard any other Green Party candidates, even when uh, we had one running for mayor. Did you could get them on? No. Not at all. Even now, we'll see what happens in 2012. Um, so it seems to be that it's still part of the same status quo. And again, this is coming from uh, my small circle of Greens and definitely uh, about 50 of us, again, who like hang out on a regular, regular basis. Um, we still, I and my house, KPFA is the only thing I listen to. And my town halls on the block, they're probably not going to listen to much to uh, the herbal highway. Could you, could you say your name again? I get that. Uh, it is Vicente Cruz. OK, yeah, I contacted Don uh, McClay. Yes. the Green Party of Oakland. Yes. So um, I was you know, asked to come in. So those are, our, those are our theories on it, that it seems very, very childish. Um, it's a way to, re there's bigger priorities that we need to deal with about KPFA. Um, Programming-wise, again, just us on the block, we'd love to see call-in programs, at least two. Straight call-in programs, no matter what side you are. And I agree, even not maybe politically, but I've heard people that may not be considered, quote, liberals, get cut off. And that's, that's not fair, really. I want to know, first off, I want to know what the enemy says and what the enemy's doing. I do, personally, right? So I think we need more community programming where it's just call in and we can hear what the community is actually doing. And then also, come out to us. Come out to us, right? The same thing we're dealing with Occupy right now. If you, we, when we go into East Oakland, when we go into West Oakland, and you ask the people of color there, what's the big thing? Like, we don't know. Those white kids aren't coming down here, right? Those old white folks at KPFA are coming down into our community. Right? You don't see what's going on on a daily basis because all the things that actually are happening happen to us on a daily. All those kids in Occupy getting, what, 400 of them? And I'm down there, 400 getting arrested. Well, that, that type of stuff happens to us on a daily basis. Daily. Sitting on my stoop. OPD will come by and have a racial profile. So please, stop uh, bickering with each other. At least if you disagree, act like adults. Right? Don't act like middle school and elementary school kids, which again, which the rhetoric seems. Not that we are, but the rhetoric seems. Please come together, give us back our station, and uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'll try to make this fast. I know it's been late, and I'm amazed you guys have been doing this since what, 6 o'clock this evening? <laughs> wow. Um, okay. I'm going to endorse what the previous speaker said. There's more important things to do out there. There's more, there's a, so many things that you could do with $20,000 besides this recall. It's almost countless. Um, biggest waste of money I've seen in a long time. Um, and guess what? Okay, let me say one more thing. 
I don't want this to be about attacking individuals, and I say this is someone who's being attacked as an individual, which I could do without. I also don't want it to go the other way. I have feelings about Larry Bensky, who I know. Some of them are positive, some of them are not so positive. I have feelings about Brian Edwards Teeker. I think he does some good news reporting. I also think he was a rather atrocious board treasurer. That's my opinion. But the point is that's not what this recall is about. Um, I'm still trying to figure out what it is about because there are a lot of things. Like I just heard I was responsible for a recall attempt against Brian a year and a half ago, and that was kind of news to me. Um, I'll tell you what that was about briefly, but is it about having, is it about taking the executive director out to dinner once? Is it about Brian's recall? Is it about um, motions that were put before the national board that the national board voted yes on with no hypnotism from me? I swear I have no skills as a hypnotist and no ability to tie them up and compel them to vote in ways that I, that I wish. I don't know what it's about. Um, except that it's about control and except that it's about financial irresponsibility that in my view was massive, not just tiny, but like pretty massive, big figures. I mean, I work for a small nonprofit. To us, half a million dollars, a million dollars, vast amount of money. The $20,000 we're spending on mailing all this crap, um, I could start a low-power radio station for that. And I'd really rather that that's how the $20,000 gets spent. All right, so the $100 dinner. Yes, I went out to dinner with the executive director. I went out with her, so I was trying to remember what the heck this was, to harass her about program councils that were no longer at KPFA that I thought should be. And I'm a nag on that, if you know me. Um, we went to Cafe Venezia on University, which is two blocks from KPFA. And I said, rather generously, considering my crappy salary, I'll pay, because I was trying to be hospitable. And I remember actually complaining to Sasha Petrin, who was a friend there, that the damn dinner had cost me like $89 because that restaurant's expensive, and we had two glasses of wine instead of one, and now I was short. Um, to be fair to the ED, she then took me out for dinner some month or two later, Thai food, and we evened up the tap. <laughs> In terms of Brian's recall, let me just say something. Only staff members can recall staff members. That's a system that we have. I'm not a staff member. Only listeners can recall listeners. I'm a listener. Um, I, I couldn't have done that. What happened, and I'll be very fast, is that um, Brian made an accusation a couple years ago in the Berkeley Daily Planet, which used to be a real newspaper that you could get on the street, that said, Pacifica's raiding KPFA's bank account, which is very exciting. It's on the front page. It had exclamation points after it. Um, you know, LSB Treasurer says this, and it was written by Jesse Allen Taylor, who was a pretty good reporter, who um, wrote for the Planet at that time. And I was on the local board at that time, and I was like, really? K Pacific is reading Cape and Face accounts, exclamation point, how could I not know about this? So I called Jesse and asked him what the heck was going on, and he said that he had talked to the board treasurer, Brian Edward Steger, and he told him that this was going on. So I called and said, oh my god, what's going on? And I called KPFA, or Pacific, I called somebody and asked them, and they said, well, nothing that we know of. We cashed out a CD, we put $300,000 back in KPFA's bank account, and we left $100,000 in a new CD. And I said, oh, so you raided them by giving them $300,000 back to the bank account that had been in a CD. That's interesting. So I called Jesse and I said, I, I think maybe you got the story wrong with the exclamation point and all. And he said, okay, how do I verify this? So there was a National Finance Committee meeting. I wasn't on it at the time, but I figured they would probably talk about it since they had the story on the front page of the with the exhibition board, and they did. And I sent Jesse the tape, and he listened to it, and he printed a front page retraction the next week, which went, Pacific about not reading Katie Face Bank accounts, exclamation point, pretty much. And it was sort of like, what the heck? Um, and some people that were being represented as staff members said, what the heck? That's what happened. And, you know, even for that, which is not really in anybody's interest, because obviously people don't want to donate if your bank account is being raided. No. It doesn't sound very appealing. Um, it didn't even work, you know? And it was signed by some staff members, and they eventually had a recall, and it didn't cost anything because there's only 200 staff members instead of 22,000. But I didn't do it. And the fact that somebody would come here and say something like that just sounds to me like slinging accusations here, there, in the hopes that some piece of crap will stick. 
And the reality is that's what they do on Fox News. That's not the way we're supposed to be treating each other. We want to have a debate about the issues, that's fine. If we just want to throw a crap at the wall and see what will stick, yeah. then your time is being wasted. And you need to say, I don't like that crap, no matter where it comes from and no matter what it's about. That's it. Three more speakers. Let's see what Andrew Leslie Phillips. Thank you. Uh, listen, thank you, Vic and Cynthia, for putting this together in this lovely space that we're in. It's really great that you've done this. Um, we didn't give enough publicity about this. That's part of the problem with KPFA. We we're all walking on eggshells and, you know, so we kind of went very low key, but at least we got this far. And you know what? There are more people watching on live stream because of John Perales. And thank you, John, so much for live streaming. And that is the future of KPFA. Right there, that video and that audience out there, it's not over the air. It's on the internet, and we need to get there, and we need some help to get there. And if I remain manager at that radio station, this radio station, we will get there. That's where we're going to go. And that's where the audience is. That's where the money is. It's not about the staff. It's not about the union. I'll tell you something. I'll get a lot of trouble for saying this. We can have no paid staff, and we can still have KPFA. No problem. No problem. I'll get into trouble for this, too. I put out information, some of you may have seen, based on that recall information, that misinformation that we went out, and I called it that, and I was told as manager, you can't contribute to this situation. You're the manager, you can't take a side. I said, well, I'm a journalist too, and I know, I, tr I try to tell the truth, that's all. That's all. And I would say that again, and if they want to sack me, sack me, go ahead, give it a shot. That's okay. I mean, it's a ridiculous situation. We've got a beautiful radio station here. We have a network across this state, across this country. It's an important network. And I'll tell you something else. I was there in 1979 when the nuclear power accident happened at Three Mile Island. I walked into that station, a volunteer. I was on the air all night that night, not because I knew much about nuclear power. I was making a film. I had a lot of list of phone numbers, and we could talk to a lot of people. I thought that was marvelous. Being, open, be, be, being permitted to walk into a radio station and share information with people who were panicking in New York City that night, across that week. This was great. From then on, I became a fan of Pacifica, and I still am to this day. I have a long history with Pacifica. And the problems we see today, I don't know if they're worse or if they're better, but it's a chronic situation. Pacifica's been short of money for many, many years. A few moments in history when we get a bump or we get a war or something, people listening, get a lot of money, a little bit of money, not a lot, got some. But most of the Pacificus history, going right back to 1949 when it started, has had a chronic problem with money. Uh, we, ne we need to deal with it. We've never had uh, the, the situation now where we've had this, this is like over a million dollars, two million dollars, uh, where we need to spend on staff salaries. I'm not. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, I'm just saying that is different. That is a different situation. That is a different situation. And, 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 and maybe we need to look at that. The Pacific will survive, I believe. It, it certainly can survive. And I want to just say one a couple other things before I finish. I want to respectfully, Brian's left, but thank him for coming tonight. I want to respectfully thank the other people from the other side, the so-called other side. I don't really think they are on the other side. The so so KPFA, Sasha was here, Jack was here. Mm -hmm. It's a shame they didn't stay. Thank you all for staying and uh, keep supporting the station. We're going to stay. It's going to be okay. We're going to win this fight together. Thank you. So I just want to take one more minute. This is Adrian Lobby again. If you have decided that you want to urge your fellow listeners to vote no on the recall, and you're willing to put your name behind it, we are looking for names on our endorser list. And Carol and Mara and Sally around the room have these forms. So please um, seek out one of us and get your name on. Thank you so much for staying so I can make this announcement. You get the last word. My two announcements are just action announcements too. First of all, most people in this room probably don't understand or know or are aware that Andrew Phillips is the general manager, interim general manager of KPFA, 
and is one of the people who struggled to have the Occupy movement advertised, taken over, talked about on the different stations around the Pacific and not just here. And I think we should give them a hand for a